Hola a todos. Hi everybody. I, I wonder how it is like for you, but if it is like it is for me, this is like a rebirth. You know, we are coming together, being uh, one in front of the other, uh, after having been in another place, having been at home. And I'm, this is not the, the first image. Can, can I go back to the first one, please? Thank you. And it, it is super special for me that it is here where we are getting to be together again. And I know that we are, we are not yet out of the woods. We, are still, we still have to take care of each other. But at least we are here now, and that's the most important thing. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about my last two years, <laughs> uh, what I was doing, and I was making a book. And I, wanna, I, I have some, uh, some image, images here, and I'm going to share them with you. Uh, and I'm starting it like we start stories in, in Espanol, in Mexico. We say words, like you have those words, like there was upon a time. We have words like cuentan que en un lugar lejano. That means that they say that in a very, very far away place. However, many stories are not happening very, very far away. Many stories are happening all around us. We all have narratives that are happening constantly around us. And we have the capacity to unleash those stories. Sometimes we don't see them. Sometimes we might not see them. But it is true that they are very close. Um, after I finished, uh, and after I, my book, A Dreamers, was published, and I was going around in the country reading the book and having a book that celebrated the hands that extended to me when I came to the United States as an immigrant, and I was celebrating that, uh, doing readings, going to conferences, and, and, and especially with children. At the same time, there were things that were happening that had nothing to do with the celebration of someone coming to this country. We saw it. We all saw it. We saw it. Uh, we saw people coming sometimes in caravans, trying to enter the United States because they were fleeing the violence that is happening in places where they are from. And we were seeing that those people were also being stopped that most of them did not have a chance to enter the United States, even if they apply through the right instances to uh, ask for refugee, even then they will not be allowed to enter. And we all saw it that some of them who came into the country, um, because that's part of how you ask for refugee, you have to enter the United States. Once they enter, sometimes if they came with children, they were separated. And these children were taken to different places. They were actually put in cages. And they were given these um, blankets, like astronaut blankets, as the only thing that they had to hold on to. Sometimes we know that they were not even allowed to touch each other, to hug, or they didn't have a, a, a place where to stay, even though they had been through one of the most difficult things in their lives. And I could not believe that I was presenting this book about celebration of us immigrants coming to a place like the United States, and at the same time, these things were happening. And I had a lot of questions. I was thinking, like, I make books for children. How am I now supposed to make a book for a child that has gone through a very difficult thing and tell them that, yes, yeah, someday they are going to be wholesome again? And someday this is going to pass, and they are going to be uh, grown-ups with all the resources, and they are going to be happy. How do you tell them? Because I didn't know. I knew that if something like that had happened to me, I wouldn't know my way through healing those things. So I had many questions. And at the time, we were, we were also able to see many other things that were happening, not only to immigrant children, but children at schools where 
people were coming with guns, men with, coming with guns and hurting children. We were seeing horrific things happening to our children. And there, here we are trying to make books for them. I make books, and that's the only way that I have learned now how to process the things that, that I don't know. So I decided I was going to go around and ask him. And I will be in a conference just like I am right now. At, and I will ask, if you know how, please let me know. How, how, how have you done it? How have you healed something that feels irreparable? Because I would like to know the answer. And I have many, many questions. And I start doing things like that, just making notes and trying to put words together. And at some point, I had some idea that I was going to make a book about the borderlands, that place where Mexico and the United States meet, and what happens there, and who lives there. And I was thinking, was I'm going to make a book about the experience of immigrant humans, of children. But then I realized that the, the, we humans aren't the only ones who inhabit those spaces. And I decided I was going to make a story about a deer, a white-tailed deer, because in Mexico, for some communities, the deer is a representation of the light of the path. It's the one that guides you towards the path. And it's the embodiment of goodness, of innocence. So I thought, well, I'm going to make a book about a deer. And I start doing some research as I was also asking my questions. And these are some of the first drawings that I made, knowing that I was going to make a story that had to do with, with a deer. But of course, this deer is a representation also of every creature and all the life that is in a place like, um, like, like the borderlands. And i going to. As, as I was making this book, I also realized that, you know how we have a lot of um, um, like love and we feel very connected to animals like deers, you know, four legs and mammals like us, and they are very cute. But usually we don't necessarily feel like that towards other animals, towards those that, that make us scared, towards those that are so small that we don't really give a lot of significance to their lives. And I started researching about, about the desert and the places at the, at the borderlands um, and what inhabits there. And these are some of the images that I was exploring as I was trying to make my story. And I spoke to a lot of people, people of the desert, and they were telling me that there were things at the desert, at the borderlands, that maybe we don't see them. But only because we don't see them that doesn't mean that they are not there and that they are very important. And I started making my story. And what I did is that I traveled and I went to the desert. I went to Arizona and New Mexico. And I had some people who guided me and showed me the places. I got to meet people um, who took me to places where if you were, maybe you, you were like me too. I thought that the desert was kind of like an empty place where almost nothing grew, where almost nothing happened except some things uh, such as uh, immigrants crossed those spaces. And when I was there, I was able to see how alive the desert is. And beautiful. And I didn't know that, that you could find rivers in the desert. But you can also find walls. The borderlands are not only populated by walls and fences and, and, and devices that stop people from coming into the United States, but it's also a place where there are a lot of um, borderland policies of, uh, that, that decide how you cannot come across. And even though sometimes we feel that that's a wall that won't allow people to go through, there are many other ways in which we not allow people to come through, which are all the immigration policies that are put in place. So I was exploring what happens when you put a wall in the desert. And 
The truth is that when you put a wall in the, in the borderlands so that people cannot cross, you are not stopping anybody. The only thing that happens is that that people is going to go to a places that, that are more dangerous so that they can cross. They do not stop them. It just makes them go to a place where they might not make it. And the criminalization of helping immigrants um, is, is one of the things that, that is some of the most deadly things that are happening at the borderlands. I attended a meeting from, um, that was in, in New Mexico. It was a no wall um, get together of people who are working to make sure that the borderlands are a place where life can thrive, where everybody, including the communities and the people who live there, are safe. And I also took pictures of things and flowers and animals. I didn't see that many animals because, you know, especially at the desert, they are animals, they don't want you to see them. But especially at the desert, because it's so hot that during the day, most animals might be underground or hiding. So I didn't get to see all of them, although I saw deers. Um, but I took pictures of plants and the ground because I was going to use them to eventually put them inside of my illustrations. And I also went to Mexico, uh, the, the, the Mexican side of the border, and I went to um, uh, an immigrant shelter, and there I met some families. And this mother, who allowed me to take a picture of her baby, they were there waiting for their name to be called so that they can enter um, all the evidence that they, they, they need uh, to come into the United States, they have to wait for months. So what these shelters do is once they are close to be called, they give them shelter and they stay a few days with them. And when it's getting really, really close, then they go right by the, by the immigration office outside. They put tents and they stay there until they, they call them. It can take days, um, uh, but they have to be there because if they are not there when they call them, then they lose their chance. So this mother allowed me to take a picture of the arm of her baby. And what I did is that I knew I was going to use that image somewhere. I didn't know yet how. But what I did is that I put it inside of my computer and I um, created um, an image with color and texture that eventually I used to paint the skin of all the children that you will see in the story of this book, which is called Bright Star. I also met people who are like, like, like jowers and snakes with all that energy fighting so that the communities at the borderland are safe. And a lot of people who guided me. When I was back at home, I still needed to make the images of the children, and I asked at my neighborhood. Um, there is, up at the corner of where I live in Mexico, there is a mercado, a big market. And there are many families who are there. And because there was also the COVID times, children were not going to school. So I was able to ask them if they will pose for me, if they will model. So I could draw them and make some of the images inside of the book. So my community also helped me. And from those children are some of these images. I also did some embroidery um, because I wanted this book to feel like something that is handmade. I wanted it to feel like an offering for children. I knew that these children, when they were separated from their families, they were given those blankets, like the astronaut blankets, which are probably very warm. Functionally, they might be really good. But I cannot imagine what it might be for a child to have something like that as the only thing to hold to. And I wanted this book to become like that blanket that I will give, that we will give to a child, one that was handmade, hand weaved, and that I will embroider for them. So I used some of the yarn that I had there in my studio, and I created a blanket and thus this book, would you like to read a story? Yeah. This is Bright Star. 
by su servidora Yuji Morales. And here starts the blanket so that we can wrap it around us, around the children, around anyone who feels that they need to be embraced. Child, you are awake. Breathe in, then breathe out, hermosa criatura. You are alive. You are a bright star inside our hearts. Mira, and mira in español means, in English is look. Some things you can see, others you must find. So you search. You are ready, cosita pequeña. Let's go. Vámonos. Oh no. What is that? Look and listen. Be alert. Te amo. Corazoncito tembloroso. Breathe in despacito. Then gently breathe out. Lie low. We want you safe. No matter where you are, you are a bright star inside our hearts. And if you feel afraid and you begin to hurt inside, let it out. Shout it loud. Let the world know what you feel. No! The earth murmurs your story. We are here to protect you. You are not alone. Listen. And perhaps if we are there, we could listen how the wind carries the feather and how the rain starts falling, or how the mud is being born, or the flapping of the wings of those bats that came all the way from Mexico to have their babies at the desert. Sometimes silence tells you secrets. And you imagine a new story. You imagine the most beautiful world. You are a bright star inside our hearts. And if you look closely, you will notice that every one of these children represents an animal inside the book. Like the colors of this girl here are the same colors of the moth. And he has the insects and the bats and the embroidery in her blouse is the blue deer and the hummingbird and the turtle. It might look like these things have been happening just recently, but this has been happening for a long, long time. This is not just something that happens now. The not being allowed inside the country, the people trying to go into the United States, has been happening for generations. And the, the, the government of the United States has been trying to stop people for a long time as well. And for that, they have implemented many, many uh, rules and laws that allow them to implement these barriers. And in order for the government to build these barriers, sometimes they have had to build in places that were protected, that were protected by law. And they have gone around these laws so as to being able to cut um, some of the saguaro uh, a cactus that you see at the desert, to bulldoze um, areas that were supposed to be protected. Now, this um, little deer and these children in Bright Star, their journey is not over. 
Many of them, they are still in, uh, separated from their families. Many of them, they haven't found their parents again, and they are here in the United States while their parents are back in uh, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. The story continues, and Bright Star needs to find his, her way. Perhaps she will find her mom, perhaps um, she will be able to find a place where she can thrive and be wholesome again. But what I want to invite you right now is see if you accompany me now to, uh, to sing some words to these children who might not be in a place where they feel safe, who might be scared, who might be all by themselves. There were so many things I didn't know when I was making Bright Star. Uh, but there were two that I knew that guided me. And one was that I wanted that story to be like a blanket, a blanket that wraps around children and lets them know that they are not alone. And I also wanted it to be a song, something that I could imagine, like I could sing it to children and, and I would let them know that I am and that we are with them. It's not enough that one person is with them. It's we all have to be with these children. So I brought my little harana, and I'm hoping that we can sing a song. I'm probably going to use this microphone instead. And you know, sometimes doing things that you, do, you are not good at takes a lot of bravery. But one of the things that I've learned in two, these two last years is that we just have to live. We have to do things. When I was asking questions, at, at some point I was there with my friend um, Sergio, who was the one who guided me in the desert. And I was asking again, you know, like I have these questions and I want to know about healing. And, and at the end of our conversation, he said, you know what? I don't think that you're going to find the answer to your question. So because there is no one answer. There is a universe of answers. The answer is that we sit here, that we talk about it, that we get up, that we continue, that we go, we eat, we talk, we walk, that we come to conferences, that we keep making books, that we tell stories, that we share together, that we sing a song. The answers are universal. We continue living, and that's how we continue finding how to heal the things that are happening to us. So I am not good at uh, singing. I am not good at playing. But this is also part of my answer, and I hope that you can accompany me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first time I'm going to sing this, this, this song both in English and sometimes in Spanish. And first, I'm going to just call Benedita and tell her how beautiful she is. And I call her Benedita because in Espanol, the, the, we call a little female deer, we call it Benedita. Hermosa Benedita, beautiful Benedita. Hermosa Benedita, beautiful little dear. You are awake, Benedita, estás despierta, Benedita. You are awake, Benedita, estás despierta, little dear. Now I would like you to help me. What words will you tell a little Benedita? so that she can continue on her journey. Something that will accompany her. What will you tell her? Any ideas, just let me know and we'll put it in the song. I'm going to sing one. Estate tranquila, Benedita. Be tranquil, Benedita. No tengas miedo, Benedita, don't be afraid, little dear. Or be afraid, Benedita, it is okay, Benedita. Say what you feel, Benedita, say what you feel, little dear. What else will you tell her?
Kushi 